Hi friends, uh, this is a course on uh, risk based engineering um, and in this week our introduction is over. In previous lecture I introduced you with this topic that is uncertainty and now uh, further little uh, intimate uh, topics uh, will provide you uh, through the overview uh, which is one component of this uh, lecture and then uh, I'll discuss uh, some approaches uh, right in this lecture itself uh, so that um, you get sense of uh, what is uncertainty and how it is modeled so that we get ourselves qualified for the next lecture that is third lecture. I am Professor Prabhakar B. Varde and now uh, we are starting this le lecture on uncertainty where or will be, uh, overview will be one of the dimension and second will be uh, some selected approaches discussion. So uh, in this lecture itself we will uh, complete part of the identified uh, techniques uh, that we are doing and that will continue in the third lecture also. So um, if we have to understand what is uncertainty or for that matter any subject, uh, we have to first understand taxonomy of that particular subject. Uh, that means how the experts have um, based on the knowledge that has been gained how they have structured the whole uh, technology of that particular subject. So this is called taxonomy of uh, uh, here it is called uncertainty and then uh, we will discuss uh, right in this lecture uh, some discussion or I would say introductory uh, discussion on some techniques uh, which are generic in uh, risk based engineering and uh, uh, then third will be uh, further review the salient feature of uh, the approaches especially our risk based engineering so that we are able to fit the requirements of risk based engineering and what an approach can offer uh, and then how we can enrich the risk based engineering as a subject. Uh, parametric there are two types of approaches uh, one is parametric approach and other one is non parametric approach. In simple word, if you have to understand what is parametric approach, where data is available, we are able to um, define our parameters. Uh, or in short, if you are if you are able to have a distribution built onto the system, that means we have adequate model, adequate data. That those those approaches will be called parametric approaches. But sometimes we don't have a data and then we have to uh, still take decision or we have to inference from the data then there, that is where uh, the evidence based approach that means you look at the evidence or even you draw some meaning from the expert opinion. So there is called fuzzy based approaches. Um, yeah, so these type of approaches are used. So like uh, um, bootstrap uh, approach is a evidence based approach. Then if we are, we are able to use uh, Bayesian, Bayesian falls under evidence based as well as um, uh, parametric approaches. Uh, it works really wonderful in both the domains uh, but then uh, uh, parametric approaches where we are dealing in quantities, we are dealing in data and model. So they are called parametric approaches. Uh, actually I am making a conscious effort to reduce mathematics from my, uh, my uh, discussion. Uh, why? Because uh, we want to understand the philosophy and we want to use it. So uh, mathematics we all can pick up later on uh, but then the concept should not be left out. So uh, it is my effort not to uh, uh, bring big big jargons uh, and you know and uh, uh, make you afraid of the like you know uh, from distribution uh, it starts you know and then finally um, uh, mathematics is sort of you know like uh, like Bayesian. Bayesian is again a technique which uh, the mathematics we can understand very well. It's not that we are leaving some uh, critical component from our, our uh, toolbox uh, but then uh, mathematics we, uh, we keep minimum to the extent possible so that everybody can participate you know. Okay now uh, we have this uh, taxonomy here and it has been used uh, Tenet and all they have developed it. And I think this was uh, fitting for our risk based engineering because here we talk about uh, epistemic uncertainty, we, call, we talk about the elevatory uncertainty where we are, uh, we are having objectivity in our assessment. So um, the, if we talk about the epistemic uncertainty where from it, uh, it creeps in into the, our system, it is either data, 
is this model or uh, it is parameter what parameter and one more thing assumptions assumptions are one of the source of uh, uncertainty so so that has, we have to be very peculiar uh, so along with the uncertainty uh, there is one more term which comes sensitivity analysis uh, whatever uncertainty we absorb into our system we should do a sensitivity analysis by varying that parameter in that range of uncertainty so that we do not have any surprises in terms of uh, uh, negative evidences you know so uncertainty is a powerful thing i think i have discussed about this in one of my lecture uh, if time permits we'll discuss it further but it, what it simply means is let's say upper bound and lower bound we have in our uh, is characterizing our uncertainty so when model my final model goes for validation give the uh, the uh, lower limit upper limit and check my model whether it is impacting the final result if it is impacting the final result i'll come back to my uh, desk and i'll see how uh, how that uh, uncertainty can be reduced by a model method uh, engineering some some additional features and all that so uh, uh, having a holistic view in engineering is always a desirable component now second thing is uh, uh, aleatory uncertainty aleatory uncertainty we can understand like this it cannot be reduced it comes with like suppose if uh, if i uh, if i uh, develop a uh, some thick rod of uh, uh, carbon steel okay it's a very cylindrical as it looks like but when i take dimension at various places there will be minor 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 uh, variation uh, in, in the range of 0.001 uh, cm or mm 0.1 mm 0.2 0.001 mm something but that variation cannot be avoided only advantage is such small variation we can absorb so that is not detrimental to our structure and that's how the aleatory component is not given but there are some uh, uh, precision machines where uh, the, even the aleatory component you have to be very particular and change of material and all alternate approaches are seen if we are getting aleatory component which is not acceptable but then how to understand what is coming from epistemic uh, uh, source or what is coming from aleatory source uh, i think Uh, try to reduce the uncertainty that is uh, data model method and all those things and uh, uh, assumption and try whatever is left with you is an uh, aleatory uncertainty uh, that's what uh, uh, the best uh, approach we can look at it now uh, one is objectivity wherever data is there actually you know and uh, uh, you know uh, even prescriptive nature of uh, uh, quotes guides and that there but when there is a subjectivity like uh, human expression uh, there is subjectivity uh, so um, Uh, i today i would like to believe that uh, even though i consider a reference model of human but then uh, we are we, we are focusing on safety and security both so uh, if i am developing a probabilistic safety assessment or probabilistic risk assessment because of safety on safety uh, focusing on safety aspect i should also develop a model on probabilistic security risk assessment so there in security risk assessment our Uh, psa model of course it is a reference model uh, whatever uh, random components are there it will remain there but then the uh, the uh, the the aspect related to moral and judgment they also uh, become part of it uh, because finally ethics and uh, you know integrity and all they are very important so uh, this particular model uh, i like for one more reason that is it can it has potential to address the security risk aspect also okay so having said uh, seen the uh, now um, uh, taxonomy of uh, uh, uncertainty uh, let us try to understand uh, of course some of this we have discussed uh, in in previous lecture or in previous slides uh, but let, let us in a focus way see this slide so we say that uh, uh, so one approach is called probabilistic or parametric approach i have a distribution i have a data i have assumption uh, i have model so it is also called uh, frequencyist approach or bayesian approach because both are dealing with the data now uh, structural engineering require a little different approach than what we use in probabilistic uh, risk assessment and modeling and all that so for that we have first order order reliability method and second order reliability method okay and then evidence based or now data is not available directly or they are not sufficient then we use fuzzy logic that means um, i am trying to because every time data uh, uh, typically if you see operation uh, ecosystem um, what is the level in the tank uh, you will say high or low uh, 
there can be a student which gives this reading but normally these things are considered better okay so uh, our um, what was the temperature there it was little more than this so this linguistic languages linguistic uh, form should be converted into fuzzy okay or uh, um, as a evidence for taking the uh, for uh, inferring or for taking the uh, decision so here we have uh, demster shaffer theory and then uh, fuzzy uh, fuzzy approach and then finally we have bayes as i told you bayes uh, method it works for both uh, that is parametric also and evidence based method also and then non parametric approaches non parametric approaches means um, uh, more than the more than the data and all it focuses on the approach which gives us a confidence like uh, take the example of boot strap approach it is basing it is basically strapping our shoes and every uh, every uh, uh, round it takes we it, uh, we have more and more confidence that my shoes are now properly fitting uh, to my legs and then we confidently start walking so uh, it is a more of a feeling or more of more of a structure which gives us that confidence now uh, here um, in this lecture or in this week rather uh, we will be discussing six approaches because given the time uh, is constrained uh, it is not possible to um, discuss all the approaches so i'll be discussing frequencies approach bayesian approach first order, order reliability introduction again uh, then the fuzzy approach little detail base uh, evidence approach we'll discuss uh, you know and then bootstrap method so six approaches we will discuss and this slide is available to you uh, you can uh, expand your wings on other topics also uh, to become uh, more confident about uh, characterizing the uncertainty now now if we look at the parametric approach as i told you distribution is rather at the center okay um, um parametric and probabilistic these two are used inter interchangeably you know um, and Uh, though we don't know uh, or rather uh, what we know is that confidence bound around the median value or mean value which have central tendencies uh, can give us enough confidence about the uncertainty of the material behavior or its failure so uh, we say that uh, confidence bound they represent uncertainty in our data so uh, from here onward we'll say con uh, we'll use interchangeably confidence bound and uncertainty uh, the two together because now it is a accepted norm that even mathematical confidence bound that is lower bound upper bound 5% 95% and that is a sort of a uh, visualization for me what kind of uncertainty is there uh, in in the performance you know so for that we have uh, two uh, types of uh, data one is continuous data so continuous distribution and then discrete data so dis, uh, discrete distribution in discrete distribution um, I, i found the binomial and f distribution they are very useful so here we will be discussing binomial distribution log normal distribution and exponential distribution why because exponential distribution and log normal distribution they are used extent, uh, extensively in risk based engineering and our fo uh, focus is risk based engineering similarly uh, when we collect the data from the plant a major chunk of data come especially on safety system as demand failure probability so these data are basically discrete data zero or one working or not working okay uh, the uh, system is success or failure so f distribution is the right distribution to characterize uh, our uh, data model or its uh, outcome of any analysis when they are used uh, in our calculations so uh, why i am discussing Uh, base theorem as a evidence based base approach because we are discussing in this parametric and non parametric and here i am discussing um, base approach as a evidence based approach you know so we can see uh, uh, the modeling here uh, we have uh, posteriori posteriori on the left hand side if you look at the model that is probability of v given x well, sorry probability of y given x y is our objective parameter we are trying to estimate and we have evidence or experience that is x that is available and experience can be available in the form of uh, so probability is a function of uh, given y that is priori Pri priori means uh, try to understand that some information is available in generic data source or anywhere and we are using our own evidence because finally we have to uh, treat it is a very powerful approach uh, based theorem because we are able to bring in and uh, combine 
the generic knowledge with our system specific system means whatever uh, problem we are working or whatever system we are operating or designing so system specific component which is limited uh, so if it can be combined with the vast data that is available and from so that it becomes the best estimate approach so uh, the model here is probability of y so stand alone or and then combined with probability y given x uh, probability x j when backed up by y and then finally it's a it's a uh, averaging term at the bottom and we have uh, 0 plus 1 or minus 1 and we have model for that and finally we can take a decision so plus 1 this one minus 1 otherwise so we have this uh, two mo models p is equal to p minus 1 and then all these two models uh, when we go into the details of evidence approach because uh, he, he, on this slide the objective was to introduce the subject only Okay, so here we are able to classify based on whatever li limited evidence was available, whatever generic information was available, and uh, this is called base nav approach. You know, so uh, first order liability method because you know structural engineering operates on a different, uh, a little different platform than the probabilistic. Truly, we use uh, success, failure, and all that. Uh, here, so it was required that we discuss. Uh, we are not discussing here second order uh, differential, uh, second order uh, reliability method. We are discussing only first order reliability method. Um, so uh, let us say uh, we have a function y less than uh, less than or equal to one, which is nothing but an integral of a function f x and uh, d x. So integration over. Uh, finally, what we are trying to uh, say is we are trying to create a boundary between safe reason and failure reason. Safe is when gx is more than 0 and uh, gx is 0 is our boundary and when the function uh, gx is less than 0 it is a failure reason and these are the different uh, exercises or you know profile we get when we have our data uh, but this is a coordinate system x y and all that. The, so uh, random variable x space we can we are calling it. Now we have to convert, you know, anything in normal distribution or a, a normal space, uh, we have the, we require a, a integration approach, okay, because this, uh, this is integral sign, Ind integration has to be done. But then when we create a, uh, transform the variable into uh, U uh, space, uh, that is, uh, so it is called standard normal distribution. Same thing what we do uh, when we, when we do in failure probability. Uh, z is equal to uh, x minus mu upon sigma. So here also a formulation has been done so that you get into the uh, u space and the clear uh, this uh, uh, it is defined and then they have uh, limit state function. So what we have this called is limit state function. Okay. So this is the crux of our um, form method that we have a function f x. Uh, where we go for joint probability means joint probability is means uh, there are three or four or more variables and the uh, and the product of that and uh, when it is integrated it gives us a uh, new insight uh, on our failure okay so probability of y integration gx minus 0 fx dx this is the uh, central uh, pillar of the form method actually okay so for the, since uh, I chose this particular method only for introduction, so we will not go, I have introduced it. Uh, there is a lot of literature available on first order method and second order method. Uh, we will go into that actually. Now the second approach, it is a evidence based approach. Okay. So evidence based, boot, bootstrap method, actually again here bootstrap is also a Monte Carlo based simulation, simulation because the number of uh, strings that we uh, uh, pass, pass over gives us more confidence. Similarly, uh, Monte Carlo also, it produces uh, in 1000 iteration, it produces uh, 1000 points and that is nothing but a distribution. So okay, we are able to capture the uncertainty uh, when we have a distribution. So here also, um, uh, this implementation is a, a basically it is a sampling technique and we are trying to consolidate. That means from a population, we have taken one set of sample from the same uh, 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 space, take the second sample, third sample, fourth sample and cons consolidate the result. That is, that is the central idea of bootstrap method actually. <coughs> 
So uh, here we have bootstrap tactic. So here it was sample x1, then uh, bootstrap sample. So uh, we have the variance. Uh, we can define like any other variance when we have, and uh, that is built around the median value. So um, okay, and then second thing is um, uh, we can calculate the median value itself, and it is as simple as a normal statistics, you know. And finally, what we do is uh, let us understand through one example. I have a fall tree, and fall tree can be represented represented by cut set also. So simple two cut sets are there, C1. And C2, C3. There are three component. C1 fails, system fails. Um, then C2, C3 fails, system fails. And then reliability, we know that one minus pro probability of t. Okay, uh, t is a, a random variable. Uh, then we have um, three component, and our experience is uh, one failure out of uh, one uh, 1,785 trials. 8 failure in 492 trial and 4 failure in 371 uh, failure. And then if I have to give the reliability, it is 1 minus failure probability and that is uh, two, 2 together, C2, C3, then they uh, when they fail, uh, the product uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, this failure and this failure and that will give you reliability 1 minus. So 9982 up to here, it is very simple, it is a simple reliability uh, mathematics. Now trial for uh, 2 and 3, 2 and 3 means uh, we we have uh, this is an algorithm which says the minimum of uh, NC2 NC3 whatever is the minimum number of trial that, that becomes the uh, representative for that trial and this is called fictitious series system expected to fail because if it fails in this many trials then higher trials don't have to bother about it and the formula is uh, d fictitious is equal to NS1 that is minimum trials and finally. Uh, we have this formulation and we apply this formulation 371 into whatever estimates we had over here. So um, we, we get this number 0 0.667. This is a magic number which we will use here to represent our C2, C3 and then uh, see this component was a standalone component. So we have 1 upon this failure probability and then we get uh, system reliability is equal to 0.99926. Now for the fictitious number for this itself uh, is, is equal to 0 0.27534, procedure remains same what we followed uh, like you know uh, in previous example. And now for 371 uh, and r is equal to 0 0.027, the confidence interval for 95, 90 upper and lower is uh, we can find uh, using this one and they are nothing but 0 0.99758 okay and uh, 0 0.99988. So, uh, we uh, we uh, we understood how to estimate the uncertainty in our uh, reliability estimate through a bootstrap approach. Only what we were given given is uh, the failures and uh, number of trials based on this information. Now in this lecture we have understood what is taxonomy of uncertainty. We have uh, discussed base theorem introduction, form intro introduction, and bootstrap. Uh, we demonstrated the, through one methodology uh, or one example uh, and then uh, uh, we, we understood from this slide what is, uh, what is uh, parametric approaches, what are evidence based approaches and uh, where, what is the power of base and what is the power of bootstrap approaches. So in that sense we have discussed four approaches over here. And some of them will further consolidate by discussion in the uh, coming lectures. Uh, but then uh, the idea was to introduce to um, six, uh, six uh, approaches which may or may, uh, may be used in risk-based engineering and they, are at the, uh, they form the core of the uncertainty analysis. These are some references that are available on uncertainty and overview. And um, um, I would like to thank all the authors uh, because their inputs have been used uh, in this lecture. So thank you very much and uh, we will meet in the next lecture. Thank you.